Hi folks, Damon here. One of the questions that I get asked often is when I am running my Spark code in a managed Spark environment on the cloud, how do I actually do remote debugging? So a lot of folks want to use tools like PyCharm to interactively debug their PySpark code. And it's kind of hard to do if the uh, Spark driver is running somewhere that you don't really have access to. So today I want to show you how we can do this for both EMR on EKS and EMR serverless using a Bastion host connected back to our local dev environment. So this repository that I'm talking about has a CDK stack that deploys everything we're going to talk about today. Uh, it creates two different VPCs, an EMR VPC and a DevBox VPC, and sets up peering between those two. It creates an EC2 instance in the DevBox VPC. And then we also have an EKS cluster with EMR on top of that. And then EMR serverless application that's created in that EMR cluster or that uh, EMR VPC as well. Those have security groups set up so they can connect back to our EC2 instance, which will SSH into from our local dev machine running PyCharm. I know there's a lot there, but I'll walk through all of this. So let's get started. Okay, before we get going, there's a few things you need for this demo. One, of course, an AWS account. Two, Node.js with CDK installed, as well as Python, and then Docker uh, to build the virtual environment artifacts. I'm also using the AWS CLI to upload things to S3, as well as the Session Manager plugin for SSM, because I use SSH to connect into that Bastion EC2 instance and forward a port from that instance back to my local machine. So once you have those installed, uh, we deploy the CDK stack. This is pretty straightforward. We just do a CDK deploy all, and uh, I specify an admin role name here. So this IAM role will have access to manage the EKS cluster that's created. I've already run that CDK deploy. So if I go over here, you can see there's a bunch of different outputs uh, from that CDK deploy. We've got our dev box, our bastion host that we wanna be able to connect to. For EMR and EKS, we've got a virtual cluster ID and a job role ARN that we can use to run jobs. For EMR serverless, we've got the same thing. We've got an application ID and another job role ARN just for running stuff on EMR serverless. And then finally, up here in the VPC section, we've got an S3 bucket that we create for our code artifacts and our logs. When setting this up, you will need to um, set up access to your Bastion host. I did that just by copying up my SSH key manually. Um, you might have this provisioned for you automatically. It just really depends. But once you can SSH into that instance, we do an SSH with the dash R flag, and that'll forward port 35 on, or 3535 on the remote instance to 3535 on our local host. I've already connected into that EC2 instance as well. So you can see I'm SSH'd in. And if I do a quick netstat, and grep for 3535, you can see that that's listening on that remote remote host. That is the port that PyCharm is going to listen on when it starts up its uh, remote debugging server. So that's all ready to go. I've got my CDK stack deployed. I'm SSH'd into my EC2 instance. Now we want to uh, go into that demo code folder in PyCharm and step through all everything we need to do to set up remote debugging. So with PyCharm, uh, there is a remote debugging configuration you can set up. It's pretty straightforward. I'll just go in here and show it. Um, but you set up a Python debug server. If you don't have this already, you can create a new one up here just by clicking that plus button and going to Python debug server. There are some things you need to make use of this. And one is this PyDevD PyCharm library. So what we have to do is we have to build this uh, Python module or install this Python module and get it up to our EMR environments. So I'll show you how to do that. And then here you just configure uh, PyCharm to listen on localhost and port 3535. So when we're ready to debug, we'll start up this debug server. That'll listen on that port. And we have our SSH instance forwarding that port in the VPC back to us. So that's how the network configuration is going to work. With our debug demo code, um, we're trying to be a little bit flexible with it. We only want to enable debug mode if we have a host in port. So we just have a very basic if statement here that says if we get those in as environment variables, then go ahead, import pydevd, and start, uh, start the trace. 
when we submit our jobs, we just need to be aware of how to set those environment variables. It's different depending on if you're on EMR EC2 or EKS or serverless. So there's just different Spark configuration settings you need throughout there. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is do a quick Docker build of our Docker file. And if I just switch over to a console here, change it to my demo code folder and do that Docker build. If we take a quick look at that Docker file, all this is doing is just uh, installing vnpack and this pydevd pycharm library. And then it uses vnpack to pack up those uh, Python modules into a tarbell and copy that to our local file system. One thing to note here, the platform and architecture need to be the same as wherever you're running uh, your Spark job. So if you're running on EMR7, for example, this would be Amazon Linux 2023. If you're using Graviton in EMR serverless, uh, you'd have to change that platform there. So just keep an eye on that when you're building your dependencies. It's mostly important for dependencies that have uh, native libraries and things like that, but it's also important because uh, you know, with Amazon, with EMR Serverless 7, we're using Python 3.9, so that would install the modules to a different library. So just keep an eye on that. Now that the Docker file is built, uh, we have a PySpark depths file. I'm going to take a quick look at that in our dist, uh, repos or our dist folder there. So we just built that, and now we can copy that up to uh, copy that up to S3. So we'll copy up our debug demo code and our dependencies file. Once that's copied up, we can go ahead and start a job. I've already got my virtual cluster ID and job role environment variables set, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this start job run. This is going to run the job uh, without enabling remote debugging, so I just want to make sure that everything's working, right? So I just go ahead, do an EMR container start job run. Let me get that job run ID. And then once we have that, we can go ahead and describe that job as well. So we can see that that is submitted. Um, the job should be running shortly. And once that's done, we'll be able to see the output from that job. All this job does, it's pretty straightforward. We just um, read some data from the NOAA GSOD bucket here and do a, a simple count of the records for 2023 and 2022. And we have a, you know, a UDF here just to kind of experiment with how we can step through this code. One thing to note, if you have the EMR CLI, uh, there's another tool that we've built. Uh, you can easily run this and show the standard out of the job as well. You can see I'm kind of, you know, doing a uh, describe job run here to kind of get the status of the job and see what's going on. Uh, but with the EMR CLI, we can also just do an EMR run, point to the entry point, provide our information there, and then this will also start the job, monitor it, and show you the standard out of the job when it's all done, in case you don't want to uh, you know, do all the back and forth. If you create the repository or the, the project with EMR CLI, you can also uh, build your packages with the EMR CLI and deploy those across EMR and EC2, EMR and EKS, and EMR serverless. Awesome. So that job is running now and it should finish up soon. All right, the job just completed and we can see the standard out from the job there as well. So looks like this job works and uh, shows us all the data that we need. So the next step is going to be um, setting up the remote port forwarding. So what we need to do is we need to tell the job what IP address to connect to. This is just going to be the private IP address of that EC2 instance. So we do a little AWS CLI info there to get the debug IP. And we also SSH into that, in that uh, instance, which I already did over here, right? So we've got our instance set up. It's listening on the debug port. We're going to go back and start the debug server in PyCharm. So we start the debug server, and you can see it started that at 3535, and it is waiting for uh, something to connect back to it. So what we'll do next is we'll start the job again, and we'll pass in the debug host and debug port settings. We can do this with the EMR containers start job run command, or I'll use the EMR CLI again and append my Spark Kubernetes driver env settings to my EMR CLI. So let me go ahead, copy that, and run that in our console. 
So now this will go ahead, submit the job to the EMR virtual cluster. Uh, pretty soon that will switch into running state. And back in PyCharm here, we should get a connection to our debug server pretty quickly here. All right, we just got a connection in now. One of the things that you have to do when this connection comes in is map the path from wherever the container is running to your local project. So PyCharm does a pretty good job of this just by auto detecting the path mapping settings. So I'll go ahead, set that up. And now you can see we are at a breakpoint in our debug demo file. If I look at threads and variables, you can see we've got, uh, we can inspect the different variables that are set up in the file. And if I switch back um, to the console here, we can see we're connected and we can go ahead and step through this file. So I'll um, step over the different, um, different function definitions. And then when we get down to the main method here, I'm gonna go ahead and step into that and step into the run method. And you can see here, we are at line 33. If I step over this, you can see we're initializing the PySpark session. That takes just a second. And then as you see, we can kind of, you know, step over this and see exactly what's going on. Uh, once Spark reads that data, we'll even be able to inspect the data frame that comes in. So again, this is the Spark driver that's running on a container in our EMR on EKS cluster. So when I look at that data frame, uh, we can see, you know, what that read from our uh, CSV file uh, out on S3. We can you know, inspect all the different uh, properties of that data frame. So if you ever want to you know, kind of see what's going on exactly with your PySpark code, uh, you can do this in uh, PyCharm by using this uh, remote connection method. If we switch back to the console, we can see the output that's coming from the job there. I'm just going to go ahead and let this job finish up, but uh, you can see how we stepped right into the driver code um, in our remote cluster. So that job is all done now. It uh, should be finishing up in the EMR CLI pretty soon here. And similarly, we'll see the output from the job in the uh, EMR CLI when that job is done running. So pretty straightforward. Uh, one caveat there, if you want to debug your executors, that's a little bit harder to do. Uh, I've found some ways to do it, but um, you know it's probably easier uh, if you're going to the level of debugging your executor to try to get up a local environment, uh, which you can do using the ECR public container images for EMR and EKS or EMR serverless. You can download those container images and you could run PyCharm uh, using one of those container images in a dev container environment. So that's one way you could debug locally. Awesome, so that's EMR and EKS. Let's take a quick look now at EMR serverless. Again, we can use this EMR serverless start job run command. And this is very similar. You specify your application ID, your job role ARN. The only thing that's different here is the configuration item for your driver env. So instead of Spark Kubernetes, it's going to be Spark EMR serverless driver env. And everything else is pretty much the same. I'm gonna go ahead and use the EMR run command again to do this. And I can just change the application ID and job role in my EMR run command. Let me go ahead, submit that EMR run. Now this is going to submit this to our EMR serverless application. If the application isn't started already, EMR goes ahead and starts that application for you. That's one of the things that's really nice about uh, EMR serverless. And and that's going to go ahead, spin up the application for you, and we will get another connection back to PyCharm from our EMR serverless application. Awesome. So we just got that connection back from EMR serverless. Again, we'll do this auto detect path mapping settings, select our demo code, and now we are in our EMR serverless environment uh, running code on that driver. And again, we can step through the code. Uh, you know, run to a certain breakpoint if you want to, all the stuff that you are used to doing. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, that is one challenge that uh, doesn't quite work is adding the breakpoint. Uh, is something that uh, doesn't quite work just because the location of the file on the remote container is different. Uh, we put that in a temp directory. So uh, setting breakpoints is a little bit difficult, but you can step through the code uh, just like you're normally able to do. Uh, this will run through. You can see we're getting the records there. So uh, pretty neat to be able to set up EMR serverless and EMR on EKS to do remote debugging. So that just wrapped up there. If I wanted to run that again and step through the code, 
Uh, I'll wait for that to finish. Actually, I'll just hit Control C. Go ahead, run that again, and that'll spin back up and connect back into my environment. So that is how uh, you can enable remote debugging with EMR and EKS and EMR serverless. You could certainly do the same thing with EMR and EC2, although it's a little bit easier to do this on EMR on EC2 because you can actually connect directly to those EC2 instances, right? So uh, pretty easy to go ahead and do that. Uh, again, I'm debugging uh, on that remote cluster now, so I spin that up. I've got my uh, Spark session that'll come back pretty quickly here, and then I can step through that code if I want to and kind of debug, uh, you know, my different functions if I want. So there's my Spark session. You know, nothing in here really identifies it as EMR serverless specifically, but you can see my Spark context is a custom EMR serverless Spark context. So I can kind of dig in and see what's going on there. So. That is it for today. Uh, I've had this uh, demo in my back pocket for a long time and uh, wanted to publish it, get it out there so you could see how to do remote debugging uh, in managed Spark environments. Let me know if you have any questions. Have a great one. Bye.